You're watching WICU 12. Coverage you can count on. This is 12 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Amanda Post. I'm Kevin McDowell. Thanks for choosing WICU 12 News. As we first reported earlier tonight, a single engine plane crashed in Mayville, New York. It happened before noon. WICU 12 News has team coverage of today's crash. Yeah, we're going to start that team coverage in Mayville, where a boat cult now has been at the scene most of the afternoon. Bo. Well, Kevin, like you said, it was just before noon today that a single engine aircraft crashed, killing one, seriously injuring another. It happened about a half mile from the Dart Airfield runway here in Mayville, New York. 36-year-old flight instructor Tracy Dart was killed. Student pilot 17-year-old Gallagher Bobson was seriously injured and was taken to Hammett. At this time, he has numerous head and body injuries. It appears they were in the midst of taking off and then crashed due to engine failure. However, at this time, police are still relying on eyewitness accounts. It looks as though uh, from some witnesses' statements that, the, that it started to descend, uh, may have lost power, hit uh, a power line, and then hit a treetop and crashed to the ground. And I did talk to one pilot who was in the air. He saw the crash happen. In his opinion, he said he is a very experienced flyer. The crash was due to engine failure. He also said that the flight instructor, Tracy Dart, is very experienced and very capable, so this does come as quite a shock and a surprise. The FAA is here. They are investigating a scene that at this time still has many unanswered questions. Yeah, Bo, you're up there right now. And, uh, engine failure does look like the initial cause, but we were just talking to Kelly Fredericks a little earlier, and he was talking about it. He couldn't say what the winds were like. What are the winds like up there? Are they strong right now? Kevin, we got here about 1 o'clock, an hour after the accident happened, and I was talking to my cameraman, Adam Snow. I told him that, you know what, I don't think this could have been weather-related at all. It's a beautiful day here. There's hardly any wind. To me, someone who's not a pilot, it would seem like ideal flying conditions. All right. Thanks a lot, Bo. Appreciate it. Let's head over now to meteorologist Rob Wilson, get the latest on weather conditions up there at the uh, time of the accident. Right, Kevin. Now, we, I looked at this, I uh, got the uh, time, it was about shortly before noon in Mayfield, and Mayfield uh, exists right about there. She's just, my finger's pretty close to right on Mayfield. But to get the idea, at 8 o'clock this morning, we had clouds, but why do we work our way in toward noon? 10, 11, and noon. You can see right in this area, the skies were clearing, just some thin clouds here, and uh, there really weren't, uh, wasn't much in the way of winds. Bo talked about getting there around 1 o'clock, and it was light. Well, here are the current winds around the region at noon. Noon. Seven mile per hour winds in Erie, 10 miles per hour in Jamestown, and five in Dunkirk. And Mayfield is, is pretty much, or Mayville is right there in between all three. So all the current conditions and satellite loops say that weather, probably not a factor. As I said, engine failure is involved in this one most likely, but of course the investigation will bear all that out. We just have to wait and see what happens with that. Hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Rob. Now, as we said earlier, one person did survive this crash. 17-year-old Gallagher Bobson was flown by helicopter to Hammett Medical Center today, where we continue our team coverage. 12 News, Mary Nguyen is standing by live. Mary, we talked to you earlier tonight about five. Uh, what are you hearing now, and has anything changed? No, nothing has changed. The 17-year-old was flown into Hammett this afternoon. He was flown in serious condition, and in that condition, he remains. Now, what we're learning is that he was trapped inside the plane. It's not known how long he was actually inside, but when crews got him out, he was conscious. We're also learning that he suffered some, some major injuries here, fractures to his face, a broken ankle, and some serious body injuries. Right now, he's in ICU. Again, the 17-year-old is in serious condition at Hammett. Okay, uh, thanks, Mary. Thanks a lot, Mary. Now, this is just the uh, latest of uh, several small plane crashes in our area over the last uh, 12 months. That's right. Eight people died in small plane crashes last year alone. Sounds, sounds like it's a lot, but in the whole perspective of the issue, is it? 12 News' Scott Cook has been looking into that question today. Scott, what did you find out? Well, I found out it is a lot of men. I've been going through Federal Aviation Administration records since the year 2000, and what I've found is pretty eye-opening. Let's take a look. Now, when I first looked at these numbers from 2005, you see seven total crashes, eight lives lost. That's what struck me. So I dug a little deeper and was pretty amazed. Let's take a look at the year before, 2000, a total of four crashes, only one uh, fatal and one life lost. 03, no fatals, only two total crashes. 02, one each, fatal and non-deadly, only one life 
lost. And in 2001, uh, only one accident, it killed two people. And look at the, the year 2000, two crashes totaled, nobody died. Now the numbers don't lie. We had eight killed just last year, 2005. That's twice the number of fatalities in every year before that, from, from 2000 to 2004. Live in the newsroom, Scott Cook, WICU, 12 News. All right, thank you, Scott. Hey, a Mill Creek man charged with 14 local church break-ins today agreed to a plea bargain with prosecutors, but his alleged co-defendant, his wife, she's headed to trial, at least for now, on all counts. WICU 12 News senior reporter Paul Wagner has been following the case since the break-ins happened in April. James Eisenhart came to court accused of burglarizing 14 area churches in April and May. Break-ins that included this ransacking of a church office in Fairview and the theft of money from a church safe. Eisenhart left the courtroom after cutting a deal, and he told me that churches are partly to blame for not helping the couple when they were in need. They asked them for help, and they said they didn't have no money, and then when I robbed them, they have over $1,000 in their safes. They lied to the public. So is the church's fault, not your fault? It's both fault, man. I didn't steal from the churches. I stole from God. I have to answer to him. Eisenhart will plead guilty to eight counts of burglary and eight counts of corrupting minors for taking the couple's four-year-old daughter along on some of the burglaries. And he described his wife as a victim, not a criminal. He maintains that it was solely his idea, um, that she had no, nothing to do with the planning or the execution of it, and that he, in fact, forced her to go along with it. All the criminal charges against Kay Eisenhart were waived over to court after defense attorneys and prosecutors failed to work out a plea deal. But they'll be talking again to try to work out a deal in the weeks and months ahead. Well, I'll obviously, I'll meet with my client and discuss the case. I want to talk to Assistant District Attorney Conley and Mr. Folk and regarding uh, Mrs. Eisenhart and uh, see if we can come to some a reasonable a conclusion which my client would find acceptable. But his client clearly was in no mood to talk with me. Okay, why did you waive the charges over? Because I'm not guilty of them. Now get out of my face, please. Are you going to testify at trial? Just please get out of my face. Kay Eisenhart is now free on bond. Her husband, James, remains in the Erie County Prison. At the County Courthouse, Paul Wagner, WICU 12 News. Now both uh, Kay and James Eisenhart still face charges stemming from a Crawford County church break-in. The state police say their investigation continues. A young Mill Creek man is headed to trial on charges he sold heroin and crack cocaine, but his co-defendant cutting a deal with prosecutors. 22-year-old Tony Crawford waived his right to a preliminary hearing today. He's facing trial on multiple drug counts and conspiracy. He remains in the county jail, but this man, his co-defendant, 55-year-old Michael Crittenden, agreed to a plea bargain. As part of the deal, he testified against Crawford. Authorities arrested the pair last month after seizing more than $30,000 worth of drugs and and $33,000 in cash and weapons from the suspect's mobile homes. Two workers at the Office of Children and Youth are under suspension this week. According to published reports, Sue Devenier and Michelle Shetter are unpaid leave or on unpaid leave at OCY. Administrators are not commenting on why. This is the second suspension for Devenier. Over the past week, WICU 12 News has been uh, telling you about all those lots with overgrown grass. Well, today we went to the city to see how they are handling the problem. WICU 12 News, Mary Nguyen takes a look. This home is up for sale. And as you could probably guess, there haven't been any takers. It's obvious that these people uh, have no respect for anybody else that lives near them. Neighbors want to know who owns this house on Andrews Park Avenue. A sign peeking out from the brush reveals that it's being sold by Richard A. Smith Realtors. The realtor in charge of the listing wasn't in, but what employees are telling me here is that their job is to sell the property, not maintain it. So we went to the city to find out who's responsible for it. The owners aren't around. We had an elderly couple passed away. Um, left it to, we don't know if it's in air, but we do have an executive uh, that lives in Talladega. Alabama. We have been trying to contact him since May. This house was sited back on May 25th. Since then, grass has just been getting higher. The hardest part is really trying to track the people down and locate them to notify them that they have a problem. A lot of times people will just walk away from it and don't want to be bothered by it. Ultimately, the taxpayers are the ones who pay. The city's parks department is going around to cut the grass. Right now, they have about 60 lots of private, unkept property to mow. And the list 
keeps on growing. Be patient with us. We're, we're doing the best that we can with what we have. We are aware of these. We're working as best we can to deal with them. In Erie, Mayor Nguyen, WICU 12 News. By the way, the city says if they can't find or contact the owners of the lots, they put liens on the property and they just the city just has to continue maintaining the lawns uh, themselves. WICU 12 News is going to continue our coverage, team coverage of that plane crash in uh, Mayville, New York earlier today. We'll have a live update coming up. Rod? Kevin, outside, sunshine is continuing to uh, grace our skies. As we work our way into the next 48 hours, though, you'll kind of go in and out of clouds. You can see back to our northwest, these clouds are trying to push down in out of Michigan, and there's even some activity up here in Wisconsin and the UP. And, uh, well, pretty much we have some of that headed our way. So the planner for tonight says increase in clouds will cool down into the 50s by midnight, it looks like. And then after that, well, there is some good and bad. It really depends on what you like, and we'll talk about that with Future Track and our seven day next. You're watching WICU 12 News at 6. Coverage you can count on with Kevin McDowell, Amanda Post, WICU 12 News Sports Director Mike Ruzzi, and WICU 12 News Future Track Weather Chief Meteorologist Rob Wilson. 12 News Future Track Weather, brought to you by Seaway Window Window Sunroom Siding. Made in Erie. And now, 12 News Future Track Weather. Weather coverage you can count on with Chief Meteorologist Rob Wilson. Sure was beautiful today. Gorgeous day, a little chilly, but it's going to all get a lot warmer, right, Rob? Much warmer, Kevin. We're talking air conditioning warmer, beach warmer, all that good warmer that you're expecting for the weekend. Now, we do have a little more cool weather to get through, and cool that is comparative, uh, considering our average high for this time of year is 76. Today, we uh, did make it to the 70s in Erie. Some in locations did. And uh, here at 6 o'clock, there are even a couple 70s still showing up on the map. 71 in Asheville, 72 in Franklin. The cool spot again, Erie at 65 and 68 degrees is a current uh, number from Meadville. Now, as we take you through your next 48 hours, what you know is temperatures aren't going to change a whole lot. It's really about clouds and sunshine. So here's 12 News Future Track. Showing you tomorrow's weather today from 6 o'clock on. We got some clouds building back in here from the northwest. So yeah, pushing in your temperatures dropping down to the lower to middle 50s for the beginning of tomorrow. 7 o'clock on clouds in and clouds moving back out late in the afternoon. Now we might pick up a shower to inland, but if it happens to be very light and very quick, mostly due to just a passage of a week. Uh, just a little bit of weak instability. I showed you the rain up in Wisconsin. That might pass through here, but I really think it's going to stay to our north. For Wednesday afternoon, into the evening, skies start to clear here late in the night, and then you know, look at your temperatures back down to the lower to middle 50s for the beginning of Thursday. The difference between Thursday and uh, Wednesday, a whole lot more sunshine. You can see the sun out here during the afternoon. Your temperatures up maybe 1 to 2 degrees, 74 and 73 here at uh, 4 o'clock. After Thursday, though, that's when the mercury gets cranked up and uh, probably the AC is getting turned back on. Let's take you through the Erie County forecast, the Tri-County forecast for tomorrow, about 70, 71 degrees. Mostly cloudy skies, 70 in Wattsburg, 71 Harbor Creek, and 71 degrees in uh, Erie. Uh, we're looking at uh, Crawford County, 71 in Titusville, Cambridge Springs, 72 in Meadville and Cochranton, and for Warren County, Right around the uh, upper 60s here, 66 in Shergrove, Youngsville, 67, 68 in Warren, and 69 in Sheffield. Under 12 News Future Track 7-day forecast. The numbers are going up big time. You can see there just by where we put the numbers, 71, 74, 82, and 89. Where is that 89 coming from? Well, a big, huge ridge. Uh, push of warm air is building out here in the Rocky Mountain West. Look at everything's going almost straight up to the north. That tells me there's a strong push of warm air here. And as that moves east, we're going to end up getting that same push of warm air. So from 74 to 82 to 89, we'll hold in the 80s through early next week. The weekend right now looks dry. We'll pick up some showers maybe late, late in the weekend or early on Monday. Otherwise, just looking at that 89 and thinking, wow. Thanks, Rob. We have got uh, continuing coverage of that deadly plane crash in Mayville, New York. Uh, today happened just before noon. Let's get an update now, now live. Uh, Bo Colt now, who is uh, at the uh, scene. Bo. Well, Kevin, it is a very sad day here in Mayville, New York. And as we've been reporting all night, there was a plane crash today, a single engine plane crash, killing one, seriously injuring another. It happened at Dart Airfield just outside of 
Mayville, New York. Tracy Dart, a 36-year-old flight instructor and daughter of airfield owner Bob Dart, died when the single-engine plane she was flying, along with student pilot 17-year-old Gallagher Bobson, crashed in a field about a half mile from the runway. Witnesses say the plane hit power lines, then crashed into trees before falling to the ground. Dart died at the scene. Bobson was life flighted to Hammett Medical Center. The FAA is investigating, but at this point, it appears that they were in the midst of takeoff and crashed due to engine failure. Kevin? All right, thanks a lot, Bo. Appreciate it. This is the eighth small plane crash in our area in a little over a year. The latest killing three young people from Edinburgh last August. In that same month, one died in a crash at Corey and three died when their plane ran out of gas on approach to Erie International. Back in April of 05, one man died trying to land a plane in a private airfield in Warren. There were also four non-deadly plane crashes in northwestern Pennsylvania last year. Now let's head down to Hammett Medical Center where the survivor of today's crash is being treated. WICU 12 News Mary Nguyen is there now. Mary, what's the latest? Bob Seen is still in critical condition at Hammett. Here's what we know right now. He suffered some fractures to his face, a broken ankle, and, it's, and is seriously injured the rest of his body. Hospital officials tell me that he is in ICU right now. Again, all that's all we know. 17-year-old uh, Gallagher Bob Seen in serious condition at Hammett. Reporting live from Hammett, Mary Nguyen, WICU 12 News. Okay, thanks, Mary, for that report. President Bush is in Iraq tonight. It was a surprise visit for officials. We'll take you a look at why he's there right after the break. Security is tightened in Baghdad today as the Iraqi Prime Minister's security plan for the capital is about to go into effect. The Prime Minister called for the security crackdown following violence in the wake of al Zakarwi's death last week. The Prime Minister said there would be no mercy for those who carry out insurgent attacks. Specifics of the plan have not been announced, but it will involve securing the city's roads, a ban on weapons, and implementing a curfew. President Bush made a surprise visit to Baghdad today to meet with the Iraqi Prime Minister. The Prime Minister was told about the visit only five minutes. Now you see him greeting five minutes before the President arrived to meet him. The President's only expected to stay there for about uh, five hours. In fact, he's probably already left by now. Only a few aides and reporters knew about the trip to limit the security risk. White House says that the President wanted to meet the uh, Iraqi Prime Minister face to face to show the U.S. is behind the Iraqi government. This is the president's second trip to Iraq. He visited U.S. troops Thanksgiving Day back in 2003. Doctors are expected to make an update on Ben Roethlisberger's condition sometime today. The Pittsburgh Steeler broke his nose and jaw after crashing on his motorcycle with a car yesterday. Surgeons worked on the quarterback for seven hours. It's too soon to tell if Roethlisberger's injuries will keep him sidelined next season. But doctors did indicate that his brain, spine, chest, and abdomen escaped serious injury. But what they're not talking about are his knees. I kind of reported his, yesterday uh, some knee future issues. Future in football. Yeah, well, he should be okay. Jay Pushkar is in for Mike Rizzi tonight with sports. What a Monday for some local teams. Huh? Well, I tell you what, it was a great action as Iroquois Harbor Creek and Villa Maria all advancing to the state finals this weekend. We'll take a look back coming up next. And now, 12 News Sports with sports director Mike Rizzi. Good evening, everyone. Mike has the night off. Pitching was the theme for Harbor Creek and Iroquois in their Western final victories yesterday. Junior pitcher Abby Kobolinski was spectacular once again for the Lady Huskies. She blanked District 7 champion Stowe Rocks and only allowed three hits in the Rest contest. The season has been unbelievable. We never really expected to go this far. I mean, we all talked about it, you know, going to the States and everything. But to actually be here is unbelievable. It's like a dream come true for all of us. Harbor Creek will play for the school's first state softball title Friday in Shippensburg versus Lakeland. At Betts Softball Complex in Warren, Iroquois senior Danielle Chase struck out seven batters despite having a fracture to her pitching arm. Knowing that she wasn't 100%, the Lady Braves defense elevated their game for the victory. single girl I could stand here for hours and tell you about all the things these girls do that other teams don't and you know that team pushed us and pushed us and we finally broke through and you know I love you know I just love it. <laughs> the 23-0 Lady Braves meet undefeated Blue Ridge in the single A state final Friday morning 
in Shippensburg. And the magic ride for the Villa Maria baseball team will end in Altoona on Saturday morning when they play for the state championship in single A. Deadlocked at two in the sixth inning, Tyler Fisher provided the game-winning hit, sending Villa to their first ever title game. Well, my first two bats, I struck out both times, one looking, one swinging. And base is loaded, so I knew I just had to put the ball in play and put it in play. Villa Maria battles Christopher Dock for the PIAA Single A Championship Saturday morning in Altoona. The Erie Seawolves begin a six-game homestand this evening, starting with a three-game set with the Reading Phillies. The Howlers sit in third place in the South Division with a record of 28 and 34. As seen last night right here on NBC and WICU 12, the Carolina Hurricanes are one game away from clinching this year's Stanley Cup after giving up a goal midway through the first period. Canes netminder Cam Ward made 20 saves. Carolina knows how big this road win was. Corey Stillman on a clean pass across. You know, we're going to say that from now on. Tonight was the biggest game. It's over with. We'll go back, and when we get back to Raleigh, that uh, game five is going to be the biggest game we've ever played. You can catch game five right here on NBC, WICU 12, Wednesday night at 8 p.m. And finally, the NBA shifts to Miami tonight for game three between the Heat and the Dallas Mavericks. The Western Conference champs have owned the first two games of this series with double digit wins. Uh, I got an email from my buddy LeBron. Uh, encouraging, man. You know, just letting us know what we all knew that um, they did what they supposed to do. They wanted to at home, you know, now um, help lead my troops to taking care of our business at home. So, Game three tips off at 9 p.m. Again, the Mavs lead the series two games to none. And Kevin Amanda, real quickly, an update on Ben Roethlisberger. He's been upgraded to fair condition, and they expect him to be released from the hospital between three to five days. Wow. All right, thanks a lot, Jay. Sure. And we'll check back in with Rob with a final check of your weather. WIC 12 News is finding you the lowest gas prices in the area. Lowest price we found today, 275 at the get-go on Water Street in Wesleyville. The sheets on Buffalo Road and Harbor Creek and uh, 275 at the Country Fair at 8th in the Bayfront in Erie. But if you find a better price, call us or email us at pumppricerwicu12.com. And we don't have to worry about the lowest temperatures because they're going up. Temperatures are going up. And what's going down, though, pollen counts. Check this out. Everything is low or not there. And that has been a rarity around here. And uh, trees, grass, mold, all low. Now, with temperatures headed up this weekend, we are pushing, get this, maybe 90 degrees at some point over yeah, the weekend. Yeah. Maybe not along the lakeshore, maybe some places inland. But either way, anything in the 80s right now is above average. And we're going to see that starting Friday. Hot, hot weekend. That's right. Hot, hot. Very nice. What do you got coming up tonight? Seawolves back home tonight. We'll have the highlights on the overtime. All right, thanks, That's Jay. it. And that's our report for tonight. See you back here at 11.